breakfast first and I'll be reading for an hour while waiting for the sun to rise so the book that I'm currently reading right now is The Atomic Habits I heard that this is a really good book many people recommended it and reviewed on this book so I'm really excited to read it Today is my first time skipping in a long time. I haven't skipped since probably my last PJ class in secondary. <laughs> it was really frustrating how fast I lost breath. But nonetheless, it was fun. I tried to skip to Olivia Rodrigo's brutal song and try to follow a beat. The beat of your, your wrist swing and your landing must be the same. Like, the tempo must be the same. Today's my first day really taking into consideration all the techniques of skipping rope. And in case if you guys want to know where I got this rope, I will link it. I will link it um, in the description below. I bought it from Shopee for less than 10 ringgit. So I think it's really nice and I really like the colour. It's like an electric pink. Currently, it is 8.52. I will rate today's workout um, an 8 out of 10. It was a successful workout and I can't wait to do it again. The disclaimer, I'm sorry if I keep looking down because I will be referring to the notes that I wrote regarding this chapter um, to share with you guys. So yeah, let's get started. First of all, I really love how this chapter was regarding the philosophy of searching tiny margins for improvement. Actually, I took out five points and the first one is 1% actually makes a difference. 
it is easy to overestimate the importance of one defining moment and underestimate the value of making small improvements on a daily basis. So I feel like as students, we put too much pressure on ourselves. 1% is not obvious, but it means a lot in the long run. Day by day, when you accumulate all this 1%, it will turn into something bigger in the future. So what this part is trying to sum up is that success. It's a product of a daily habit thing and it is not like a once in a lifetime thing. You don't wake up the next day and you're automatically successful. No, it's actually a build up of habits that change your behavior and your personality, the way you carry out your life that leads you to this success. And there's a saying from this chapter that time magnifies the margin between success and failure. It will multiply whatever you feed it. Good habits make time your ally and bad habits make time your enemy. So the second point that I gained from this chapter would be the plateau of latent potential. It's actually a saying that James came up with to describe a breakthrough that unleashes major change. The most powerful outcomes are usually delayed. In your daily life, does it mean if you struggle to keep up with a good habit or you're struggling to remove a bad habit, it means that you lost your ability to improve. No. I will probably relate this point with my YouTube experience. When I put too much effort on something and it's not seen, then I feel like I'm just not improving. So I was self-doubting yesterday night and I was thinking that I'm still at the same spot. No matter how much I do, I'm still there. It's like no improvement at all. So yeah, I guess this point, it really came true to me when I read. And then I realized that my work is not wasted, it is just being stored because as long as I'm putting in effort, as long as I'm making progress, little by little, it will start to build up a lot and it's just temporarily being stored right now. So all of these points will actually lead up to a graph that was created by James. We always expect ourselves to improve linearly, like gradual change and improvements but we don't realize that it actually takes time to have these improvements to be shown clearly to people and yourself so in between what we think should happen and what actually happened there's this gap and this is the gap called valley of disappointment it is when we will get disappointed and upset at ourselves we will start to lose hope we feel what we're doing is not enough and so yeah. So the third point that I gained from this chapter, forget about your goals but focus on systems. Goals are about the results you want to achieve and systems are about the processes that lead you to those results. You're probably gonna think that okay if I don't focus on goals and I just focus on the systems instead then that means goals are useless right? Unfortunately goals are not useless. You know why? Because goals help you to set like they help you see the future clearly like the pathway of the road you're heading down to and it's actually good for setting a direction as well but systems are the best for making progress don't let all these goals ruin your mood so if you did not manage to achieve something it's fine just be happy that you took the step to try be happy that you actually initiated a move to improve yourself. The next point from this chapter will be identity change is the north star of habit change. So there's this diagram with three circles and the inner circle would be the identity, the middle would be the process and the outer one would be the outcomes. So these three circles are known as the three layers of behavior change. And James said that the ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes a part of our identity. So we solve problems using systems by changing our identity. This means that we switch our mindsets to become more positive. So let's say if I want to go to the gym and I want to lose this fat, you know, I want to gain abs. And I've been doing, I've been going to the gym consistently for 7 days 
and I do not see any improvements. Yeah, I feel like, man, this is taking forever. Why is nothing like improving? But why not? I switch my mind by saying, you know what? It's okay. I might not see any improvements now, but I'm at the gym. I'm going to exercise right now. I'm going to improve myself, even though if I can't see it, I know something in me is changing. So that mindset will like keep you going like, okay, I know something is going to work in the long run. I know this isn't useless, like I'm doing all this, something will definitely happen soon. Just not now, but soon. And lastly would be how to build habit. So there are four stages to building habit. The first stage would be your cue. A cue triggers your brain to initiate actions. It will lead to your second stage of building a habit, which is craving. Your brain starts to provide motivational thoughts to you. So many ideas popping up. You move on to the third stage, which is you respond to your thoughts. You perform the habit that's in your mind already. The last stage where you will receive your award. So if all four of these stages, James actually related it to the four laws of behavior change. The first law is to make it obvious. You have to make your habits obvious by designing your environment according to your cues. Whatever vision your brain gave you, you have to execute it. I had this thought that I wanted to have a better lifestyle. All these motivational thoughts started to come into my mind like, okay, how are you going to have a better lifestyle? Wake up early, get breakfast. That's how I designed my environment earlier as you guys saw. And second is to make it attractive. You have to make your habits attractive because if they're not attractive then you won't be motivated to do that habit so just like working out you have to make that workout fun for you so that you will be interested to do it maybe put on your favorite music or do a different workout video every day so that you won't get bored of the previous one stuff like that you know and the third law will be make it easy so Make it easy refers to reducing friction and prime our environment for the habits that we would like to develop. And the last law would be make it immediately satisfying. So what this means is that James mentioned what is immediately rewarded is repeated and what is immediately punished is avoided. Just like how when we were little, if we do well in our exams, then our parents will give us a present, give us some cash. You have to make your rewards satisfying so that you would continuously look forward to doing that habit that gives you that drive. You know that the reward would be amazing. So this is all for my review and my take on Atomic Habits Chapter 1. If you guys like this type of content, and you guys want me to do chapter 2 then let me know there's actually a free pdf to download online as well i watched a youtuber's review on this chapter i match it with the notes that i took so it's a really good way to learn more i hope that you guys would come along with me to this reading journey and start reading this book hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did do like my video and give me a subscribe comment down what books you're currently reading if you are reading and what are you currently doing see you guys in my next video ciao of things